Hey out there, I got a great song for you today. I'm excited to bring you a request, Ruben and Charisse by Robert Hunter and Jerry Garcia. All right, so a couple notes about this song. Well, I modeled this version mostly off of the, uh, of Jerry Garcia's acoustic renditions, but it works just as well electric. So feel free to play this along with all the electric recordings, or you can do it as just a solo rendition. And uh, the other thing I just wanted to mention is, um, you know, I consider this a story song. It's got a very vivid story, lyrics courtesy of Robert Hunter. And when you have story songs where the music goes along with the story and you have a very capable musician that came up with it, Sometimes you get some things that are more complicated than it seems on the surface, and we definitely get that with this song. You know, one example I like to think of is the song Money by Pink Floyd. You know, the first part of that song is in 7-8, but if you just think about the melody to it, it's easy to uh, play without counting. And you know, this song isn't very different. If you just kind of play along with the lyrics in your mind, um, it seems very simple, but if you actually count along, there's a lot of time changes in this song. So when the verse starts off, it's got two bars of 4-4, four, four, then it's got a bar of 3-4, then 4-4, four, four, then 2-4, and uh, at the very end of the chorus, it's got a bar of 7-8. So you'll see what I mean, but really, if you, you can count along, and I mean, if that helps you get it down, that's great. But if you just play along with the lyrics in your mind, you'll probably have no trouble playing it. All right, let's get started. So this is, um, song clocks in about 84 beats per minute, and it's in the key of B major. And we start off with a B power chord on the second and fourth frets. So second fret, fifth string, then we have the fourth frets of the fourth, third, and second strings. And then we play an F sharp bar chord. You know, this is the E cage shape. Just take it up two frets. And then I like to play it with my thumb. And then an E chord. So those three chords get us started. All right, so the intro goes like this. All right, so we play a B. So we do that on a downstroke. And then I'm going to break down the strumming, especially for those of you who um, are more of a beginner. So we have uh, the best way to do this strumming is just to keep your hand going, your right hand, kind of like a pendulum. And then we just uh, make contacts with the strings or we mute it when needed. So we have a downstroke B chord. We miss the uh, strings coming back up. Then we kind of, you know, just hit the strings, the dead strings, so. And then hit the F sharp on the way back up, so we have. And then we uh, miss the next stroke going down, and then we play on an upstroke in E, and then E on a downstroke, so we have. All right, then another downstroke, and then down, up, down, up. So 
So we do that a total of three times. And then the last time, the first half of the measure is the same. And then we play that E downstroke again. But this time, instead of playing the E four times, down, up, down, up, we play an F sharp. So we have. All right, again. And if you put those four measures together, you get something like this. All right, so that brings us to the verse section. So using the same three chords, we have something that goes like this. It's All right, so it starts off with the B and then we have so that's downstroke and we play a downstroke where we hit the strings and then we play an upstroke on the F sharp and a downstroke on the F sharp. So we have down, up, down, up, down. Down, up, down. Then we hit the muted strings twice and then we play E, down, up. Kind of hit the muted strings and then up with the B chord then up with another B, and then up with an F sharp. So it would go like this. And then down with an F sharp for the second measure. So slowly. All right, the second measure sounds like this. So we have down, down, up, down, then up three times, followed by a down stroke. So we have all right, the first two measures together. All right, so bar three in the verse is a bar of three, four, and it sounds like this. And I'm gonna play it with the fourth bar too, so we have All right, so if we put those two bars together, we have F sharp, B, F sharp, E. So the first four bars together. All right, so the next bar, fifth bar of the verse, is a bar of two, four. So we have E, B, F sharp. All right, so if we play everything we've got in the verse so far, we've got
right, so then the next bar is B, F, E, B, F. So it's just like the first and second bars. So we have. And then a bar of three, four, F sharp, B, F sharp, E. So again, that's like the beginning. <clears throat> and then we have, and then we have a bar of two, four, and a bar of four, four. All right, so let's put everything we have together so far from the verse. Alright, so now that all repeats. All the way to the last bar of E we just played, but instead of playing that one bar of E, we have two bars of E. So starting from the second ending, it sounds like this. Alright, so slowly that strumming pattern is down, so it's on an E chord. Down, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. So. And right there we accent the chord a little bit. All right, so this takes us to the chorus. So we start on a C sharp minor up here on the 4th fret, so 4th fret 5th string, 6th frets of the 4th 3rd string, 5th fret of the 2nd string, then we have the 4th fret of the 1st string. So we play down, up, wait, down, up, down, up, and then up. And then F sharp, which is an up down. So I believe it was the um, Oregon prison recording where I hear Jerry doing this. He goes. So he takes that from the E shape of the F sharp chord and he slides it down a whole step for the E chord. So we have. Then we have a B chord up twice, a B sus, so we play our B chord using our first and third finger, so second fret, fifth string, fourth frets of the fourth, third, and second string, and then you use that pinky to play the fifth fret of the second string, and that's the uh, fourth degree of the chord, an E. So our sus4, so we have. Then we put that back down. And 
then we play an A sus4. So, so we bar our second fret of fourth, third, and second strings with our open fifth string. And then we, I use my ring finger. I mean, you can use whatever finger you're comfortable with to play the third fret of the second string. And just for that one upstroke, so we have. So in the key of B major, a G sharp is usually a minor chord. So that's why you can really hear this one just kind of ring out, you know? So we have. And plus A is not, an A chord is not in the key of B major, so we're borrowing a couple chords. And we have, starting from the C sharp minor, All right, again. All right, so that B sus chord, where we have to A, that's a bar of two, four. Then we're back to a bar of four, four. <clears throat> and then the G sharp, it's a bar of four, four. Then we have our C sharp minor to B, F sharp to B, So this B, F sharp, E, a bar of 2-4, and then we're back to a bar of 4-4, four, four. and this strumming pattern is... And then we have a bar of 7-8, and that sounds like... and then back to the beginning of the verse. So let me play the whole chorus for you. Alright, so we have the intro, we have the verse and chorus. So the verse and chorus make up the bulk of the song, but it's not just verse, chorus, verse, chorus, or I'm gonna label this A section and B section. So I'll make a roadmap for the form of the song. So you just follow that. So we have A, A, B, and A, B. So I'll write all that out for you. So we have the intro, that A section, the B section. So then the next section is at the end of the song, after all the lyrics are done, it's a rhythm part. All right, so these next two parts are uh, specifically taken from the acoustic versions where it's just Jerry Garcia and John Kahn. And it sounds great if you played along with the band, but it also sounds great if you just play it by yourself. So, that the first part 
goes like this. So you just play that part and you can just repeat it as many times as you want to just establish a nice little groove. So what we're doing there is on the last upstroke of the measure before this begins, we just play a B. So it's a pickup measure. So we have a B, then we have an F sharp with an upstroke, and then an E up down. So. Three E and a four E and a. All right, so the up downs go like this. So we have up, 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 down, then down, up, down, 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 up. Then we have up, down, up, down, down, up, down, 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 up, down. All right, I'm gonna write that out because I know that's a lot to remember. But we have So of course you don't have to play it exactly like this, but this is just um, an example to go off of. So after you do that as many times as you'd like, we'll take the E, instead of playing an open position E, we'll play an E up here on the 7th fret of the 5th string, ninth frets of the 4th, 3rd and 2nd strings, and just play that same pattern so we have. All right, and then Jerry does this really cool thing up here in the acoustic versions where he goes. So what we have there is on the third fret of the seventh, the eighth string, we hammer on. So you're gonna bar the seventh frets of the third, second, and first strings. And we're gonna hammer on from seventh to the eighth fret of the third string. And then play the second and first strings, seventh fret. So it's four E and uh, then we have muted strings twice, and then an upstroke F sharp. So 9, 11, 11, 11. Slide that down to an E, or 7, 9, 9, 9. even slower. Uh, 
Okay, and in my uh, demo at the beginning, I played this next part over top of that because this is that that underlying rhythm is what should be underneath. But of course, when Jerry's playing it by himself, he can't have that underneath. So this works great either by yourself or with that rhythm part underneath. So we're playing this melody right here. So what that is, is we have a B triad, uh, second inversion, up on the 11th frets, 11th and 12th fret. So we have third string, 11th fret, second string, 12th fret, first string, 11th fret. So it looks like a D chord, but starting on the 11th fret. But we're gonna play it one note at a time. So we start on that D sharp or the 11th fret of the first string. And then we play 12th fret of the second string, 11th fret of the third string. So remember that shape. Then our next shape is this major triad shape. So that's a major triad second inversion. This is a major triad first inversion and an F sharp triad. So we have C sharp or ninth fret of the first string, then A sharp and F sharp or 11th frets of the second and third string. And then you move it down a whole step like you're gonna play the E triad. But instead of doing that, we play a couple other notes. So we have So that 7th fret of the 1st string, 6th fret of the 1st string, or B and A sharp, and then we have the 9th fret, 7th fret, 9th fret of the 2nd string, or G sharp, F sharp, G sharp. And then we're gonna go down to an open position E chord, but we just need the top three strings. And we're gonna hammer on from an open G to a G sharp, and then play second, first string. So we have And then an E chord, so it's the D shape that we played up here on the 11th fret, but now on the 4th and 5th frets. So that's an E triad, second inversion. So we have... Then second and first string. Seventh fret to sixth fret. Then six, seven, four. Let's try that part one slowly together. Again. All right, now 
a little faster. All right, so that's all the parts you need to play Ruben and Charisse. It's now just about putting them in order. All right, if you enjoyed this lesson, please subscribe to my channel. And I uh, can't wait to see you next time. All right.